Claude and Shane used to talk about women and sports once, but now that they both suffer from arthritis and 10 million other physical difficulties, the main subject of their conversation is medicine. Still, however, their way of communicating is the same as always, excited and competitive. Perhaps this is why, in the end, Claude gets upset when his memory is questioned. His memory is in perfect condition, and he will never need a pill to improve it. Let's hope he will remember this assertion all the way to the end of the story. As their conversation continues, we learn that due to some serious conflict, Claude's daughter is divorcing, and she and her daughter are coming to live with the grandpa for a while. Claude is excited about their arrival, thinking that he can use some company after all this time. Suddenly, however, when Shane leaves, Claude's son-in-law appears on TV with a public apology. He seems to have been a lieutenant governor, but thanks to the scandal, he is resigning to devote all his life energy to earning back the trust of his wife and daughter. Here, it is said that the girls forgive him. Later that day, the old man goes to a publishing house where he has been working for 12 years and talks to his publisher. As it turns out, he has been a theater critic, writing for a major journal throughout all his life. But now, due to the scandal in his family and further because of his age, the trust has been lowered. They are transferring him to a digital addition to their journal and letting him see what it looks like. As a young man scrolls down the page of the digital journal in front of him, Claude notices something that catches his attention immediately. And no, it isn't an article about arthritis medicine. It is about Lillian Blanche, his first love and a wonderful actress. As the article says, she now has Alzheimer's disease and lives in a special home. Claude asks to be sent the article immediately, and he leaves without further objection about his transfer. Memories of Lillian pouring a cup full of warm meaning into his heart that night. Looking at the pictures and the letters from her, he remembers just how much he used to love her and realizes that he still does. The next morning, the old man tries to make himself more presentable. Looking at himself in the mirror, he tries to recollect his charm, but the grunting doesn't really help. In any case, soon he drives to a nursing home where Lillian lives. Wiggling his way inside, he follows a group of elderly people around the area until he captures a glimpse of his love, sitting in a chair in the garden, looking around with glassy eyes. A wide smile appears on Claude's face immediately. Looking brightly, he sees Lillian's condition until a nurse appears in front of him. Really, he's been looking like a person with Alzheimer's who's been wandering around aimlessly this whole time. The nurse's name is Zephyr, and she thinks that Claude is one of the residents here. The old man doesn't tell her the truth. He clearly has a plan, but as of yet, there is no telling what it is. Whatever it is, however, Shane clearly doesn't like it in the next scene. There is no wonder that he doesn't. His friend is clearly willing to do something not only illegal, but highly unlikely as well. He is planning to sneak inside the nursing home, act like a resident, and reunite with his first love. He believes in the magic of love, and thinks that, despite Alzheimer's, Lillian will remember him. It is a good feeling to believe that some experiences reside in the places of the soul, not accessible by time or illness. Truth be told, Shane understands his perspective as well. He wouldn't check himself into an old man's home willingly, though. Interrupting this conversation, Claude's daughter Selma calls. This is a chance for the old man to speak his mind about her decision, and he does, emphasizing how big of a mistake Selma is making by staying with the cheating husband. He reminds her that a spare bedroom will always be waiting for them in his house, in case they are tired of the untrustworthy man in their place. Selma doesn't think it will come to that, she is giving her relationship another chance. Suddenly, she is told big news about his father. Claude tells her that he and Shane are going on a trip somewhere far away. In the next scene we are introduced to Tanya, Claude's daughter. She seems to hate the idea of accepting her father's apology. She would have preferred to go to the grandpa and get away with this despicable man. But the decision is not fully hers to make. Following her around the house, we see that she is going through a hard time. Getting back to Claude, we see that he's planning to fake Alzheimer's. It cannot be that difficult to fake it, since it's only detectable from behavioral patterns. As always, Shane disagrees, but his friend is so excited about the prospect of getting back with Lillian that there is no point in trying to make him reconsider. With this, Claude makes all the necessary arrangements to make his case more bearable and asks Shane to play the role of his neighbor. His entire life, he's been critiquing actors, but now he will have to put himself in their shoes and see how easy it is. Claude and Shane are like the best acting duo in the next scene, being in total sync like Abbott and Costello, or more like Han Solo and Chewbacca, they manage to assure the nursing home administrator that Claude is having a really hard time with Alzheimer's. Two words, shit and babble, are extensively used until the woman is totally convinced to put the old man with the other residents who suffer from dementia. 
And so, the first great success is at hand. It is here that Shane tries it for the last time to put some common sense into his friend. But there is no use, especially now that the objective is so near. He will not, by any stretch, even think of going back. All Shane can do now is promise to help in any way he can and give his best friend some pills for a certain hypothetical situation. It will help him rise to the occasion, so to speak. Following Claude throughout the rest of the afternoon, we see him among people who struggle with memory. Without much effort, he plays along with the general scene and peeks over constantly at Lillian, who keeps looking around with a sorrowful and seemingly meaningless expression. Meanwhile, Tanya is finally beginning to get some attention at school. Throughout her entire time there, she has been average, but now, thanks to the scandal surrounding her father, things are beginning to change. Claude initiates a conversation with Lillian for the first time in the next scene. Sitting down next to her, he talks about their past, about the time they first met each other and got drawn by passion. He reminds her of her performances and his reviews, and he even shows her a picture of them sitting together, both young and beautiful. Unfortunately, Lillian maintains a meaningless stare in front of her. To the woman, these memories mean nothing. The information about this magical past is forever gone from her memory. And so, the initial attempt to connect with Lillian proves unsuccessful for Claude. This, however, doesn't mean that he will stop trying. Later that day, he calls Shane and asks him to bring her favorite flowers and a tape of her favorite music. When Lillian walks inside her room in the next scene, a strong scent of lilies hits her nose immediately. Advancing through the flowers, she finds a note and a CD too. The note says famous words from Shakespeare. Doubt thou the stars are fire. The smell of the lilies and the sound of the music bring a bright smile to her face. For the first time, meaning appears in her eyes, but no actual memory manages to sink into the surface of her consciousness. The image of young Claude and the love she once felt for him are still nowhere to be found. This is why Claude keeps trying to remind her later that day. Sitting in the garden alongside her, he transfers himself to the past, where he describes the events that took place in the present time. Claude and Lillian are so in love here that they spend every night together, without exception. The only problem is that Lillian has a husband and she lives in Paris. The only time they can see one another is when the girl comes to the US to participate in a play. Everything, however, changes when Claude decides to change the gear. He goes up to Lillian and asks her to run away with him. The expressions on the girl's face speak to the fact that she expected this to happen. She is all for it, but before she can run away with Claude, she has to see her husband and explain everything to him. After going to Paris, however, not even a word from her came back. Her personality sinks into heavy silence, and it never emerges out of it. Once Claude even flew to Paris to see the girl, but Lillian didn't stop to say hello. In the present time, Claude adds that he did hear from her once after that. A letter came from an anonymous individual, saying, Doubt thou the stars are fire. Lillian takes a better look at the picture then. The people depicted there sure seem very happy. Lillian's favorite song, Embrace Me, was sung all over the nursing home then. Even though Lillian does not remember her past lover, she enjoys his company in the nursing home. In contrast to this bittersweet moment, Tanya is making a dramatic decision to run away from home. This sure must be the best outcome for her situation. As this huge step is taken by the young girl, her grandfather starts to be delighted by the nursing home. As he tells Shane in the next scene, he likes it here. The relationship with Lillian, however, is going quite slowly unfortunately. Here, something extremely comical yet very important takes place. Shane expresses interest in seeing the old woman, and once he takes a glance at Lillian from the other side of the room, he sees her with another man. As Claude explains, the man must be her brother, but what happens next kind of goes against this information. The man kisses the woman passionately and walks away to speak to the nurse. If he really is a brother, the two must be really close to one another. Overhearing the conversation with the nurse, however, Shane learns that the man is Lillian's husband. It is also terrible and enraging for Shane. All this time, he believed that the only morally gray thing they were doing was sneaking inside the nursery home. But as it turns out, Claude is also planning to break up a marriage. Infuriated by the lie he's been told, Shane jumps up and shouts that he will no longer help Claude with this task. He is done bringing in good stuff, and he will not pay one more penny for him to stay in this nursery home. That day, Tanya appeared at Claude's home. She knows where the key is, so she gets inside without any trouble. Like her mother and father, she thinks that the old man is in Spain, having the best time of his life before setting foot in a grave. But she finds too many books and pamphlets about Alzheimer's and nursing homes lying around the house. He calls the nursing home then and learns the truth about her grandfather's whereabouts. 
Unfortunately, she snitched on him then. After the news comes to the mother and the father, the whole family decides to pay the old man a visit. Their opinions are conflicting. Some think Claude might actually be sick, but some oppose this completely. In any case, Tanya did us a great deal of favor. The reaction on Claude's face is priceless when he sees the family coming towards him. He is having a hell of a time on a couch, living a simple, enlightening life. But immediately, the expression on his face changes when he sees his daughter's ambivalent smile. Happiness flushes down his face, and desperation hits him like a rocket. Forgetting how to blink his eyes, he has no idea what to do, but soon he manages to fit back into his role as a memorized fool. To her surprise, he plays so well that even Selma has no other option but to believe that her father has Alzheimer's. Talking with the supervisor, in the next scene, tears come to her eyes. As it looks, the girl blames herself for not paying enough attention to her father. She cannot be the one to blame, however. She's been having problems of her own. In any case, she will definitely spend more time with her father now. Definitely a thing that Claude wants the most in this romantic and turbulent stage of life. As this conversation is taking place, Tanya is trying her best to communicate with her new grandfather. Claude continues to show incredible skill in method acting, as he stares at one point in the middle of the air somewhere, as the kid tries rigorously to find something interesting to talk about. Still, however, Claude is like a fish. He only speaks up when Tanya touches on the subject of the sling of good stuff. The old man requests some cognac. What an alcoholic fish. To Selma, Claude's condition is a source of immeasurable pain, but for her husband David, it is great news. Despicable man as he is, David visits Claude alone the next day. The old man has hated him from the very beginning, and now, finally, David has a chance to talk down on him. It is a great feeling to see the old nemesis' foolish, blank face, but behind this foolish expression, a very sharp mind is watching. Later that day, Claude puts on one of Lillian's old performances, and all the elderly in the nursing home watch as Lillian feels a special connection to what is going on on the TV screen. When a few hours pass, a certain newspaper publishes an article with a picture of David and Claude on the first page. Naturally, David and his assistant did it on purpose, but when Selma calls in rage, the man turns to lies. People of all ages drink some cognac in the next scene. Paying heed to her words, Tanya starts sharing her troubles. Everybody in school seems to know that her father is cheating and that her mother is putting on a miserable show of ignorance. To add to it all, David seems to want to go to Florida to stay there forever, and now Claude is in this mental state. Hearing about Florida, the old man asks too many rational questions, and thus, the truth slips away from his tongue. Tanya immediately grasps the whole nature of what is going on, and seeing that there is no point in hiding it anymore, Claude admits that he's been lying this whole time. The mask of dementia disappears from his face in an instant, and the face of the clever man shows itself. At this moment, Tanya learns about Lillian as well. She is a bit confused at first, but soon the news cheers her up. Her grandfather doesn't have Alzheimer's, he's only a little overdramatic and romantic. In the end, she gets to hear one more secret too. As Claude says, a theater company comes to put on a play in a few days, and he wants to do something special. Lillian's best performance is in Winter's Tale, and so he is planning to use it as a lever to reawaken Lillian's memory of their love. The old woman reads the love letters she once wrote in the next scene. As Claude smiles next to her, she reads the mind of her younger self, but again, she fails to remember anything. The words are so heartfelt, and they express the bittersweet experience of longing for your lover in such a beautiful way that the emotions Claude once felt reawaken in his soul. Brought to tears, he remains silent as the letters finished. Rain comes in then, and the letters ruined with drops of water. The next day, we get a better glimpse into Tanya's life at school. As it seems, he likes a young boy named Logan, who acts in the school club and wants to join him in that business. His friend group, however, keeps making fun of her behind her back. That day, Logan comes up to Tanya and her best friend and apologizes for his friend's behavior. He presents himself adequately and turns around to leave once his apology is accepted. This is a great chance for Tanya to ask Logan about the theater club, but she is too shy. Thankfully, her best friend isn't. So at this moment, Logan hears about Tanya's request to join the club. He seems like a great guy. Later that day, we learn that Tanya's school club is the exact theater gang that comes to put on a show in Claude's nursing home. They are the ones who are planning to reawaken Shakespeare's Winter's Tale. And even though Claude is a ferocious critic, Tanya isn't afraid at all. The ways in which they got the chance to play in the nursing home are only illegal for a little bit. They just call the real acting company and tell them that the residents of the nursing home are all exploding with diarrhea. The teenage humor and practicality are the best. 
The play is wonderful with only one problem, nobody seems to know their words. Throughout the beginning of this memorable performance, some additional problems arise as well, some of which enrage Claude, but generally, the silence is filled with the mumbling and stumbling of the youngsters trying to speak in Shakespearean English. Claude, the renowned critic however, pays more attention to Lillian than to the play. Once the girl on stage forgets her word as well, Claude notices a strong change in Lillian's expression. A miracle happens then. As if all the accumulated Alzheimer's has transferred from the elderly into young people, the memory of Shakespeare's words suddenly comes to Lillian. Standing up abruptly, she gets up on the stage, the place that feels the most natural for her, and starts going at it with a talent that hasn't disappeared. The boy on stage tries to keep up, but naturally, he fails to stand alongside one of the best actresses in the world. When he loses his wit completely, Tanya jumps up on the stage and pushes him away. She knows how important this sudden reawakening is, and she will not let it slip away. As the two coolest girls in his life participate in a play on stage, tears come to the critic's eyes. All this time, a heavy curtain has been hiding the person he always loved, but now his Lillian is peeking out of the bleak, memoryless environment, and she is as dazzling as ever. It is truly a moment of reawakening, a moment of miracle, in which this personal crucial memory suddenly activates inside Lillian's mind. Truth be told, Tanya plays wonderfully as well. Once the play is over, Claude appears behind the curtain and sees Lillian, who finally remembers him. The Shakespearean words must have been connected to the memory of Claude. This is truly the highlight of his life. In the next scene, the kids are enjoying the applause as the old couple slowly dances in Lillian's room. To be frank, there is nothing old about them at this moment. When a nurse enters the room, all he sees is passionate love, the one that cannot be interrupted. And just as almost all exciting love between two young people must also be destroyed. In the next scene, Claude stops trying to present himself as a person with Alzheimer's. And so the supervisor informs him and Selma that they can no longer let him stay at their nursery home. This is when the old man raises the subject of his lover. Lillian is better as well. And furthermore, they love each other. They should be permitted to leave, together. This all sounds great, but there is a very big problem that Claude overlooks. Frankly, he's been overlooking this problem his entire life. Lillian has a husband, and just as with any other man, he won't really dig the idea of his wife hitting it off with a man who has the most unusual case of Alzheimer's. Claude says goodbye to the friends he made along the way in the next scene. He and Lillian share a warm, sorrowful embrace as well. The task has been fulfilled, the memory brought back, and unfortunately, this is exactly the time when they say goodbye. The pain of the farewell is strong, but Claude has a good reason to lament. He must spend more time with his daughter and granddaughter. As painful as it is to her, Lillian thinks that his decision is correct. She will love him for as long as she lives. And so, getting back to his usual life, Claude starts living with Tanya and Selma as the girls finally leave David behind. Soon, Lillian's husband learns about the adventures that took place in the nursing home behind his back. An outrage is expected, but the man shows surprising sensibility and sensitivity. In the next scene, he even thanks Claude for brightening up Lillian's days and permits him to visit her anytime he wants. It is perhaps the biggest and most difficult gesture anyone has ever made. Claude is extremely grateful. Being as old as a hill, he still manages to be with a married woman. Now that's a talent. Meanwhile, the piece that brought Claude and Lillian together puts a spell on Tanya and Logan as well. And one more thing, we don't know whether Shakespeare has something to do with this as well or not, but Shane finds his true love too. Countless memorable days are still in the future.